Jay Ball, a couple of weeks ago, Coach Standard was saying that you were kind of knocking off the rust uh, from from the injury, just uh, as it relates to your game speed and your lateral movement. And, uh, how are you progressing, and what are the biggest challenges still remaining for you physically? Um, I feel like I've done a great job since the beginning of camp to to this point of knocking off the rust, like Coach Daniel said, just getting back out there. And I felt like my knees gotten better day by day. A couple of practices ago, Coach Kleiman came up to me and said, J-Ball, you starting to look like an athlete again. And that just – small stuff like that just helps my confidence going out there to each and every day. And I tell them it's a day-by-day process. And so I'm happy with my process of getting back out there. And um, I think the most challenging part is mental because mm-hmm. I feel like – I'm, I'm, my knee's fine. The trainers tell me all the time that it's just up to me mentally to go out there and be who I was before the injury. And just before contact, thinking about contact and thinking about the whole process I went through with my knee is the biggest challenge, I would say. And I just got to get over that. And once I get over that mental that mental hump, I feel like it's, it's full force ahead. And I feel like I've been doing a pretty good job so far with that. Once I get back there, out there on that field, where it's full go against somebody else's team, it's going to be, it's going to be on and popping. So, the, the last running back that was uh, this short of stature and um, was able to really perform as a true freshman was was, uh, was D. Sproles. I think he was five foot seven. And now you have Deuce Vaughn, a true freshman that's kind of burst on the scene. How difficult is it for the defense to catch Deuce Vaughn? What kind of challenges does he present? Uh, he's speed. He's a matchup nightmare in the past game. Um, what else? If you get him in open field, he's probably going to make you miss most of the time. So when we see him in the backfield, I know me and Elijah say, me and Elijah talk to each other and we say, deuce, deuce, deuce. And we, we point him out every time he's on the field because we know that either he's getting the ball or they send him up to, to get the ball. And so, we just try to contain them, keep let the DNs know who's in, just so they can keep contained. That way we keep them in the box as far as our defense. And but Deuce is a hell of a player, man. He's he's one of the most mature guys I've ever been around as mm-hmm. far as true freshman wise. And that's a great thing. I tell him all the time that he's more mature than he needs to be right now. And that's great. And um he's doing a great job. I'm glad he's he's doing a good job. He's another element for our offense and I hope he he bursts out into the scene the scene this season. I hope he becomes one of the best running backs in the Big Twelve. So, thanks, Jay Ball. Good luck this week. Thank you, John Kurtz. Hey, Justin, have you had time to reflect back on just how long of a road it's been to get to this point this week, where you're going to be a starter and a season opener uh, for a team at the the college level? Uh, yeah. Uh, every time I go home after practice a long day, watching film and just practicing and going through rehab and just doing things to get my knee better each and every day, I go home and watch film on my iPad. And I just sit there and I just thank, talk to myself and thank God that I'm able to get this opportunity and I keep doing things to get myself better at home. And I just keep thanking God and keep believing in my faith. And I talk to my parents, my my family members all the time, just thanking God, man, that I have this opportunity and I'm just, I'm just so grateful to be able to be out there again. And I just, like I've said, I'm excited and eager to get out there on the field against somebody else's team and, and let it all go. So. The Arkansas state offense remind you in a, in a lot of ways of offenses you see typically in the big 12 in terms of what they do from a style For standpoint. Sure. For sure. We like the up tempo is comparable to almost like Texas tech which is like a full force ahead as far as speed and getting lined up. They're not as fast, I wouldn't say, as Texas Tech, but they will get lined up, and, and you just got to get set before you you know what you're doing, and you got to get everybody aligned as far as me calling out the defense and letting people know what they got and letting them know what I got. So um, it's, it's, a, it's great seeing that for the first week and get prepared for our, our league and just being able to – have that type of team to prepare for for the Big 12 challenges like Oklahoma State, the Texas Techs, and all those guys, the Baylors, and just being able to have a team to prepare for that like that is is truly a, 
a great opportunity for us as a team to come out for the first week of the season. Thanks, Justin. It's Hey, J Ball. Um, take me back about what 15 months ago when you injured that knee, the end of spring practice a year ago. Um, what was going through your mind right then? Because I'm sure you knew how bad it was, and compare that to now and learning to trust that knee again. Um, first thought process was uh, I tell my team, I told my team in Memphis uh, right before the game last year. <laughs> Looking at Reggie, Trey, Deshaun, and Jordan Mitty, Joe Davies, all those guys, my first thought process was, dang, I'm not going to be able to play behind my brothers. And though that D-line was amazing. But now that I see that we we have guys to replace those guys and that we have a great D-line this, this year, the one that was the first thought that went through my mind, just not being able to play behind those dogs. But I'm glad we have a new element as far as um, the defensive line and new speed element, as far as pass rush and getting behind the ball, getting behind the line of scrimmage. And that was one of my initial thoughts. But going through this process of rehab and getting better has showed me that I can, I can do anything as long as I put my mind to it. I've been through so much adversity in my life, even with here going through college and being a young guy, making having some hiccups and doing some – things that I shouldn't be doing and just going through adversity, man. I just, I just want to again, thank God that I have an opportunity and I'm blessed that I've had the strength to keep going and the faith to keep, keep going and fight through everything I've been through. And I just can't wait to get out there on the field Saturday. Kels. How do you personally as a linebacker handle it? on the field when you've got two quarterbacks to worry about in a game like this one? Um, I'm more so me specifically, I don't worry about it too much. I just line up against whoever is out there. You know, I, of course I look at personnel as far as who's out there, but the quarterback position, as far as the run game, it, it's, it's a little element, but as far as the run game, I'm thinking about fitting schemes and, then, then I'm worried about the pass as far as uh, the defensive wise because if a team can run on you, then they can do anything. So it's first stop the run and then worry about the pass. And so I think that's what our whole defensive mindset is um, is as a defense. And so we're not too much worried about who's out there. We're more about more worried about who, who's on our defense and what we're going to do schematically to stop anybody who comes on that field. So. Adam? Now that you're in the grind of the week, just as a player, how much of a difference would you say it makes having this non-conference game to play rather than just jumping right into the conference play of the season? Uh, like I said earlier, this is a great team to uh, help us prepare for the league because they, they're schematically similar to the Baylors, the TCUs, the uh, Oklahoma State, they run the similar offenses. And it's a great team to prepare for. And it's a great opportunity for our defense to get this type of scheme. And, and as far as tempo, getting conditioned for the Big 12, and as far as schematically getting prepared for the schemes that we're going to see as far as the defense versus the offenses in our league. And it's a great opportunity for each and every one of us, even the D-line to the cornerbacks and they need, we need to see it as a defense and we're blessed that we have the opportunity to, to see that. And for you personally, what is your day-to-day -day life like now? That um, me personally, um, I wake up, I come to the complex, uh, get some treatment in just to get my knee better and every, my, all my body parts and just my knee, my whatever hurt me at the time, just come up there and just, get right and so um then we go to practice and we get right schematically and talk about the things that we're going to work on at practice and then we go out there and practice and we get right and then after that i go look at the things that i need to work on when i'm at home on my ipad and um and when things we need to work on as a defense and i ask any questions on 
uh, that I have questions on as far as what I messed up at practice, as far as what we messed up at practice on defense to coach. And I get it done and I get it in my head so I can prepare for Saturday. So. Let's do these last two real quick, uh, Derek. Yeah, Justin, uh, it's been an irregular off season and we haven't really gotten to know your new linebacker coach very well. So how would you describe him and how of a coach he is and what's like to play for him? Um, it's great to play uh, for coach because he's, he's going to hold you accountable for everything you do. He's going to hold you to a standard and he expects nothing less of that standard. And he talks about all the players he's had in the past of who – who thanks him for being hard on them because it's gotten them to where he where they are now. And um, I can't wait to get out there and play for a guy who's going to hold me accountable because it's just going to make me better as a player. And I just can't wait to see what their hard, their hard nose uh, accountability is going to do for me as a player as far as me being prepared for the next level. So, Last one here, Ryan Black. Hey, Justin, how you doing today? I'm good. How you doing? Hey, so as a follow-up to Derek, um, it, it certainly seemed like you and, and Coach Hazleton had an extremely close bond. I mean, I remember that video you guys did where you, like, interviewed each other. Uh, just how tough was, the, was that on you when he left? And maybe how much are you guys still able to keep in touch? I mean, obviously, he's got a new job, but I would think maybe you still have, have his number and try to re maybe reach out from time to time. Uh, yeah, it was tough at first, but, you know, you got to realize – all of this is a business and we got to do what's best for us individually. And that's what was, he felt like it was best for him and his family. So all hats off to him for getting a great job and being able to put his family in a better position. So, uh, of course I love coach Hayes and I'm sad that I didn't get the opportunity to go out there and play for him, but, uh, I support him and everything he's done. And, uh, we actually talked, uh, during the draft that was happening, this spring because one of his linebackers from Wyoming got drafted and we watched film on him all the time and we chopped it up a little bit and we haven't talked since um the uh quarantine and everything has happened because I guess I've been so busy that I haven't had the opportunity because I'm coming back off my injury and haven't had the op opportunity to talk to him but I'm glad you mentioned it because now now I'm gonna hit him up right after this so see how he's doing